Welcome to the News Hour. The questions swirling for the past few years about information and misinformation spread on social media about everything from COVID vaccines to election security have made their way to the federal courts. Several Republican state attorneys general argued the Biden administration went too far to suppress conservative views online. And yesterday, a judge in Louisiana agreed, issuing a sweeping and temporary ruling blocking government officials from communicating with social media companies about so-called protected speech. Liz Mural is the Solicitor General of Louisiana. She led the Republican state's legal team and joins us now. Welcome to the News Hour. I want to put to you, Solicitor General, if I can, what Jamil Jaffer, who's of the Knight First Amendment Institute, said in response to this ruling. He said, quote, it can't be that the government violates the First Amendment simply by engaging with the platforms about their content moderation. If that's what the court is saying here, it's a pretty radical proposition that isn't supported by case law. What do you make of that argument? You know, there are 80 pages of fact-finding by the judge in this case that would that explain why this is so much more than that. This is not just the government saying, hey, we don't agree with something somebody said on Facebook or on Instagram or on um, some other platform. This is about the government engaging in a widespread enterprise to censor people's speech that it disagreed with. And so it doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on, that ought to scare people. When it comes to content moderation about dangerous, harmful content online, what do you believe should be the government's role in addressing that? I think the First Amendment establishes where the government's lines are drawn when it comes to what the government can and cannot do. And what's shocking about this case is the revelation through 20,000 pages of documents that we obtained in early the early proceedings in this case that demonstrated that the government not only did not know where to draw that line, but didn't care. But, so where do you draw that line? Just to press further on that, I know there are some exceptions in this ruling, right? The, the judge did say the government can flag content about national security threats, foreign attempts to influence elections. Do you think they should just be limited to that in terms of the exceptions? Well, I think that's protect. Those are that is speech that is not protected by the First Amendment, and then there is speech that is protected by the First Amendment. And the government can't do through the back door what it couldn't do through the front door. So it cannot partner with tech companies to censor people's speech that it disagrees with. And that's what we discovered through. And we're still in the early stages of this case. There's probably a lot more documents to come, but we've got twenty thousand pages showing that from the White House through the FBI, through CISA, through HHS, through the CDC, that there was just a widespread problem where the government was had moved from, from addressing speech that it disagreed with, which it can do, by the way. It can say, we don't agree with what, you know, somebody said on Facebook. They can absolutely do that. But what they can't do is cross the line and tell those in, through a private pipeline tell those companies under threat and coercion that they have to take speech down. You know, critics have said this is a very broad ruling, that it doesn't necessarily add a lot of clarity to where some of these lines are. So I want to ask you how you view some of these issues. We talked about national security threats. What about election misinformation? For example, posts about the 2020 election being stolen, which are provably false, and we know fuel real-world violence. Should the government be able to step in and flag those? You know, we have established jurisprudence on what is protected speech and what's not. Do you believe and this I, is protected speech, spreading lies. that 2020 election lie? I think that the government doesn't get to decide whether people go out on Facebook and say that or not. So you, and when the government starts deciding what we can and can't say, we have a huge problem. And that's what we saw in this case, that the government actually is quoted in these emails as saying that people shouldn't be able to decide their own facts. I just That's want to be clear here. You, you're saying you do believe people should be able to spread misinformation about the 2020 election. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying the government doesn't get to decide what it thinks is misinformation. I have to ask you, because we've seen in studies and reports from the social media companies, there has been a lot of, of an increase in terms of hate speech online in recent years. And many people have said they've been harassed increasingly online. We know how easily and quickly harmful content can spread. So what have you seen that leads you to believe these social media companies are capable of moderating that dangerous content themselves? 
you know, if they're not capable of moderating content, I mean, I, I think that the companies themselves have set, set some guidelines. Uh, the company, these platforms enjoy a, a kind of protection that newspapers and radio and television stations do not. They are, they are granted immunity under Section 230. Um, so I, I think that this is a different, it is a more complicated problem. If they're going to edit and they're going to censor people, then they are, uh, they are essentially not in compliance with Section 230. Now they've become editors. So, you know, does government get to step in and actually force them to censor speech that government couldn't otherwise censor on its own? That's the real question in this case. It's not about whether these companies are capable of censoring speech adequately on their own. It's whether government under the First Amendment could do it in compliance with the Constitution, and it can't. That is Liz Murrell, Louisiana Solicitor General, joining us tonight. Ms. Murrell, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me.